Dead Space is a game renowned for its weapons arsenal, a stacked list of top-grade tools all with specific utility, great power, and most importantly, fun gameplay. Even with Motive Studios' Dead Space being a top-down remake of the 2008 classic, this legendary set of weapons has remained, however, their mechanics have been changed drastically and, in my opinion, for the better as a whole. Leading us to today's topic of discussion, a general grading of the Dead Space remake's weapons. In contrast to our usual ranking approach, we're not going to be listing each weapon on a combined list and counting down from worst to best, rather grading each on a scale ranging from S to D for do not use. To set the rules, each weapon will be graded based on its usefulness alone, utility while paired with other weapons, ability to work well in specific scenarios that weapon is designed to counter, and of course, enjoyability. As well, for the sake of structure, we'll be going over each weapon in order of acquisition. Each of the nine weapons in the Dead Space remake are useful and dangerous, a point to how well made the game's weapon balancing is. But, due to it being so well balanced, this may be the most subjectively sensitive list we've ever made. To make it as objectively applicable as possible, we used each weapon with maximum power nodes and in the same combat arena to make it at least fair in comparison between each. Before we begin, we'd like to give massive thanks to Motive Studios, EA, and the entire Dead Space team for a review copy of the Digital Deluxe Edition, and we're beyond excited to now be official EA partners. As well, make sure to check out our Discord server, TikTok, Instagram, and Patreon, all linked below, and thank you to our patrons Jack Allen, Aaron Trong, and Tin Tanabulations for your never-ending support. You guys are awesome. So... How good is each weapon, and what should you use on your run through the rotting USG Ishimura? Let's get into the video. Weapon 1, the Plasma Cutter. It may be the first weapon you get, but don't be fooled, all reliable here is more than capable of carrying you from start to finish. In fact, it quite literally did carry me from start to finish, it's the only gun I used in my entire new game playthrough. It definitely has varying utility depending on the situation, but for the quadrupedal necromorphs, it is by all accounts one of the best tools for the job. You can sometimes hit multiple limbs if you aim just right, and often reduce both of a necromorph's legs to plasma mush before they can even get within striking distance. It comes with a rather deep ammunition pool, meaning you'll rarely, if ever, need to reload in the middle of a combat scenario. The adjustable angle feature makes it highly flexible in terms of trying to remove specific appendages, like in the case of the explodey arm guys when you want to use their sack for your own purposes. The main drawbacks of the plasma cutter come into play against infectors, lurkers, and other creatures of their ilk. They can take significant amounts of ammo to kill with the plasma cutter and are rather hard to hit without the more sweeping areas of effect that most other weapons offer. For its broad all-around utility, the plasma cutter scores a commendable grade of A. Weapon 2, Stasis. With experience comes knowledge, and with knowledge you know that Stasis is debatably the single most broken non-DLC slash post-game weapon ever. Please, please don't comment Resident Evil Infinite Rocket Launcher. Thank you. Stasis is one of... One weapons that serves a constant purpose in both combat and puzzles, an indication from the game itself that you should use it as much as possible. I'd be remiss to also not mention that Stasis is Dr. Mercer's weapon of choice, using it on Isaac during the Hunter's Reveal and on Jacob Temple in the murder scene later in Chapter 10. Stasis slows enemies down to a mere fraction of their regular movement speed, at first for only short periods of time but with energy upgrades upwards of 15 seconds. For a reference guide, the Brute, being the hardest base enemy, becomes a non-existent challenge with just one shot of decently high-level stasis. With the Splash Zone node upgrade, stasis becomes more widespread than the throwable canisters, and altogether at maximum level can quite literally remove the challenge of enemy encounters altogether. Because it's so good, I usually manage to subconsciously stop myself from using it in general as it ends the fight on impact no matter how overwhelming the moment may be, but when used only occasionally, stasis is one of the most fun fun and powerful weapons in gaming in general. To hopefully the surprise of few, we gave Stasis a unanimous grade of S. Weapon 3, the Pulse Rifle. It seems to be a running trend that in every space station invasion game the rapid fire rifle weapon sorta sucks, well at least in this game in Doom 2016. Let's get the obvious out of the way, the primary fire is about as useful as kicking up dust. It doesn't impede their movement whatsoever and takes about three times as much time and ammunition to do what literally any other gun does. The secondary fire is a different story. It can cause some hefty devastation, especially if you did a diligent job organizing a necromorph mosh pit first. Even then, there are drawbacks. 
This isn't Call of Duty Zombies. You can try training them around. Believe me, I tried, but it just does not work that well a lot of the time. Most of the time, you'll never be seeing more than two together in one spot, unless you're pairing it with a gravity well from the Force Gun. And if you have the Force Gun, it means you already have a veritable arsenal, complete with a multitude of guns that could accomplish this without using 25 rounds. It doesn't even have an obscure situational use you'd want to dig it out for. Perhaps worst of all, it's not even that fun to use. The only conceivable utility of the Pulse Rifle is eclipsed in totality by other options, rendering it unquestionably the the worst weapon in the game. I'm sure you can see where this is going. We give the Pulse Rifle a grade of D. Weapon 4, Kinesis. Kinesis is interesting. As a tool in exploration, it's great, but it only gets a brief and forgettable tutorial for its use in combat. In Dead Space 2008, Kinesis' use in combat only went as far as throwing canisters. However, for those who've played Dead Space 2, you'll know Kinesis is one of the most efficient and deadly tools thanks to the limb mechanic. And the remake integrates Dead Space 2's far more combat-applicable approach, so there you go. For those on edge over Kinesis' use, I'd say you're right to be questionable, but know that Kinesis is incredibly efficient in either stunning or killing a necromorph, and is great for ammo conservation, as all you need is one limb or spear and it's lights out. Unlike the original Dead Space games, Kinesis is part of the rig's upgrade path, making it much easier to max out, although admittedly I didn't notice the change as much. While somewhat powerful, Kinesis fails to consistently kill high-level necromorphs, but due to its efficiency in stunning them with any object, be it a limb, body, or microscope, as well as its usefulness in ammo conservation, Kinesis gets an overall grade of B. Weapon 5, The Ripper. Video games have a rich, storied history of fun motorized blade weapons beginning all the way back on the original Doom. I think I speak for most people when I say that adding one of these into a game has literally never been a bad idea. It worked in Bloodborne, it worked in Resident Evil 7, and it definitely works here. Dead Space being Dead Space, it's a bit more inventive than most and has more to it than simply allowing you to carve necros into giblets. The alt fire allows you to send one flying around the room and watch it ricochet with deadly consequences for anything in the room not named Isaac. I saw this happen in real life in my 7th grade woodshop class once and it was really something, a lot louder than you'd think. The Ripper excels at one-on-one -on -one combat, essentially fodderizing whatever is on the wrong end of the saw and stunlocking it to death. The game doesn't throw massive groups of foes at you all too often, so even its more individual-focused nature doesn't hinder it as much as one might think. As long as you make sure to give everybody a turn, you'll rarely find yourself in dire straits here. As far as weaknesses go, the alt fire feels basically useless to me and I have no idea why you would ever use it besides as a combo finisher of sorts. It's also perhaps not the wisest choice against the explodey guys and pregnant dudes given the consequences for rupturing their respective sacks. But whatever, it's insanely fun to use. For solid utility and the incredible visceral amusement power, we grant the Ripper a grade of A. Weapon 6, The Flamethrower Hey, at least it's useful now. The old flamethrower is best described as totally fucking useless, at least the one in Dead Space 1 and 2, and you've probably noticed, but I clearly haven't and don't exactly plan on playing Dead Space 3, at least for now, so sorry for the lack of comparisons to that pile of shit. The flamethrower was essentially dead weight in the first two games, but the remake introduces a new alt fire, that being a flame wall across a short region of the ground. The flamethrower is alright on its own, it's able to slow down necromorphs both individually and in groups, and the firewall is great if two to three are used in a line, however scenarios where multiple small walls of flame can block off entire points of attack are few and far between, and even then the line gun's laser trap is simply a better alternative that serves the same purpose, but with more damage, less ammo used, farther reach, and better vertical range. All in all, the flamethrower is a decent weapon both on its own and used with others, however both its primary and secondary fires have simply more ammo and damage efficient substitutes, leaving it useless in practicality as fun as it is to fight with. The flamethrower is memorable and fun, but ultimately receives a C grade. Weapon 7, the contact beam. This thing takes no prisoners. It's a giant laser. Press R2 for two seconds and whatever was bothering you is now gone. It pretty much does what the flamethrower does, but far better. I personally consider this the second most awesome weapon in the game behind the soon-to-be-covered line gun. It's hard to argue against the appeal of obliterating anything in your path wherever you point. That's pretty damn useful. It also happens to be much more ammo efficient than you'd expect given its amazing power, although it's still not something you'd want to be using for every trifling creature you come across. It also has an alt fire button that houses the power of pure absolute devastation, doing damage in a flash that nothing can withstand. 
If you ever get tired of the Twitchers or whoever else, there is a surefire way to take care of that problem. There is no situation where this gun isn't useful and it's heaps of fun to use, but its less sustainable ammo ecosystem makes it just one step below perfection, granting it a grade of A. Weapon 8, the Line Gun. I've exclusively used the Plasma Cutter and Line Gun in every run of a Dead Space game except for the remake with which I use the two I just mentioned alongside the Force Gun and Contact Beam, which should tell you all you need to know. The Line Gun, next to the Contact Beam, is the most powerful weapon in Dead Space. At max level, it has enough power to kill any base necromorph with a single well-placed attack and can knock out entire combat arenas on its own. It has a great clip size and solid reload speed, although rarely will you ever need to use anywhere near 8 shots in a row to clear a section. It does have a slow rate of fire, so it's most optimal with a faster supplemental weapon like a Plasma Cutter, but still the Line Gun is by far the most destructive gun and with the remake, Line Racks move significantly faster, making it even more powerful. The timed plasma bomb is replaced by a laser trap, and while not as useful in spur of the moment combat, the laser trap is broken when strategically placed on bridges and walkways, demolishing anything that touches it on high levels, similar to the flamethrower's flame wall, but just better. If it's not already obvious, the line gun is the single best weapon in dead space, and with that, gets a final grade of S+. Plus. Weapon 9, the Force Gun. If you want to get things where you want them, this is the gun to use. Trying to get a necromorph to piss off? Hit him with a thunder gun and watch him land flat on whatever remains of their ass. Need to set up an epic combo with the contact beam? Gravity well it is. While it doesn't exactly do damage in a traditional sense, it has amazing utility in conjunction with the top tier guns that can leave entire hordes decimated in seconds with good application. However, one could argue that this extra step is seldom necessary save for the sake of amusement. You could set up a gravity well and enjoy a nice 3 for 1 dismemberment fest with the line gun, but you could just as easily fire 3 individual line gun shots to similar effect. Saves a bit of ammo for sure, but it's not an absolute necessity unless you're really tight on supplies. The force gun is a heavily underrated weapon in a general sense, but neither Jack nor I could justify objectively giving it a higher grade than B. To quickly go over our rankings, in the S plus tier we have the line gun, in S, stasis, in A, the plasma cutter, ripper, and contact beam, in B, kinesis, and the force gun, C, the flamethrower, and lastly, in D, for do not use ever, the pulse rifle. Leading to the question you've all been waiting for. What weapons should I use? While we tried our best to make this video as objective as possible, ultimately the answer to this question is yours to find out on your own journey. To give a bit of a guide, we found that the best general loadout for us was the plasma cutter, line gun, contact beam, and force gun. Generally those four in a group are pretty unstoppable. Either way, if you disagree and have a different opinion on our rankings, comment below! Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoyed. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't, and be sure to check in every week for new uploads. That's all for now. Deuces.